Thanks. Here. Um, but thanks. We are recording this meeting. Just so that, uh, just so that you're aware, you would have heard that now, which is great. Um, just a big thank you as well to everybody who's come to join us tonight. Um, it's really nice to see your faces and have your support. Um, we really hope that you gain some value. And we all know that the time that we have um, just to ourselves is really precious. So thank you for giving us this uh, this hour, just over an hour. And on that point. Uh, we are time boxed to around about uh, 90 minutes, give or take, uh, depending on how we how we um, how how our session is is going. And uh, generally, we love to have a bit of collaboration. So please, either um, you know, put your hand up or uh, put stuff in the chat. Any questions? Uh, some of the subjects that we're going to be talking about tonight. Um, if you feel a bit a little bit sensitive about them, then just directly message um, Heather. She is uh, very welcome to receive those messages and those those questions there. Um, if you feel a bit shy about asking them, so please go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, and like I said, we are recording the session as well. So before we get started, and I know PJ, you will know that I love the game Rock, Paper, Scissors. It's one of my favorites. I play it with my scrum teams very, very often. In fact, they're probably very bored of it, but I still gives me great joy. Everybody <laughs> heard of Rock, Paper, Scissors? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so can you guys show me your best rock that's right nice rock heather where's your rock awesome lovely looks wonderful thank you um and your your best paper paper lovely and as i always say i want to see your best scissors and be careful if you've had a bad day be wary about how you show me your scissors wonderful Beautiful. Wow, that's really, really lovely. Um, great. So as usual, we have a little game with this first to warm up those, those hands. We're going to start with uh, uh, three questions, basically. You're going to show me a rock, a paper or a scissors. And the first question, I hope, is an easy one. The first question is, after three, three, two, one, who is excited to be here tonight at the Virtual Agile Meetup? Show me a rock. Yay. Okay, good, good, good. Oh, what? We've got a paper there, but we're going to change you. We're going to bring you around. It's going to be a good time. Second question. Who's seen the sunshine this week? Yeah, I was sort of going between a rock and a paper like earlier on today because I wasn't quite sure being in the sunny UK. And lastly, who has watched the Pixar movie Inside Out? Ah, okay, a bit of a half and half. It's brilliant. I absolutely, I just really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend watching it. Doesn't matter if you have kids or not, Pixar is for everyone, not just for Christmas or birthdays or children would be my strong message. Anyway, on that note, now we've got some very, very warm fingers and hopefully some warm minds as well. Um, like I was saying, we have the wonderful Heather Dunning with us today, um, and it is just such a pleasure to have, have you on board um, this, this session. So Heather is going to be sort of introducing us to some of the ways that we can nurture ourselves and the systems that we work in, um, staying calm and grounded and just really be like an open forum for us to all talk together um, and have that, that open and transparent conversation. So with this and on that note, Heather. I'll hand over to you. Ah, in... Yep, thank you so much yes. for the <laughs> I was being polite. I know my laugh can throw people, so I want to mute myself. I do want to just piggyback on what she just said and remind each and everybody on here who's choosing to listen in today, I love to have a conversation with you and not talk at you the whole entire time. Even though we are muted, which is great for some noise handling and management. You can connect with me in the chat box. Please remember, feel free to be transparent and vulnerable and text to everybody or send it privately to me and I'll be the only one that sees it. You can click on my name and send it to me. I will read what you wrote and obviously not read your name. So I, the beautiful thing about virtual is the anonymity 
And I know each and everybody on this call, especially with what you all do for work and for a living, this has been so amazing over this past year. The conversations that we've been able to have with people because of this private chat feature has opened up the vulnerability of the conversation in a way that in-person presentations don't always allow because of the fear that can come up in people. And where is that fear based? It's based in the voices in our head. So to also mention the movie Inside Out, for those of you that have not seen it, I'm going to get you a verbal trailer. I'm just going to give you a little verbal. It was a movie created by Pixar, and I'll be honest, I've been doing this work for quite some time, and this movie changed the way I could teach it. It gave people an opportunity to see a colorful visual that explained a pretty complicated concept in a simple way. Pixar took a concept that most people can't even begin to understand, and they explained it in a way that from three to 93 years old, you get it. So let's just go over it real quick. Pixar took the gamut of emotions that we feel and the thoughts that we have and the voices in our head, and they narrowed it down to five primary colors is what I'm gonna say. And the five, five primary colors they used was joy, anger, and each character had a color. So joy, anger, sadness, fear, can't leave out fear and joy, they're the leaders. So no matter what it is that you're feeling on any given day, it lies on the spectrum of fear and joy and the gamut that runs in between those two words. I do also wanna mention before I finish the inside out, fear lowers the immune system. Let me repeat. Fear lowers the immune system and is contagious. Joy raises the immune system. It said internet connection's unstable. Did you hear me okay? Yeah, it's oh, coming in frozen. and out. Yeah. Give me a head nod. Are we good? Okay. If I have to stop my video so you can hear me verbally, I might. Um, is everything good? And do me a favor and please use the chat box when you can't hear me so I can stop, pause, and adjust. Thank you for your patience. Going back to the Inside Out movie. So you have these characters. What I thought was brilliant about Pixar is the one that they chose for disgust. Fear, joy, sadness, anger, we all understand those. They could have picked anything for that fifth emotion. Disgust really represents the human's needs for preference. If you think about disgust in general, it all boils down to our preference. The movie created a story about a little girl that was moving across the country because her dad got a new job and all the voices in her head, all five of those voices got highly triggered by this move. Just a nod of heads to let me know that at some point in your life, a major transition has happened and all your voices went crazy. Coco for Coco Puffs. You know what I'm talking about? Just a nod of the heads. That's right. So today we're going to talk with a couple of those voices. But what's interesting, we're not going to use Pixar. We're not going to talk to anger and joy. We're actually going to talk to the inner critic. Everybody know what the inner critic is? Raise your hands. Yeah, you don't even ever have to know or have heard the term inner critic. And gentlemen, the faces that I'm seeing, do you know what your inner critic is? It's that voice that never stops talking sometimes. It really wants the best for you, but its approach is not always welcome. You very well want to ignore the voice, but the more you ignore it, what happens? The louder it gets, that's right. So today it's not about learning how to get rid of the critic. I will tell you quite honestly, if I learned how to do that, I would have gotten rid of that sucker a long time ago. But unfortunately, that's just not how the system of our subconscious brain works. It works in a way where we can learn how to communicate more consciously and more lovingly with all of the voices in our head. Today, we'll be talking to the critic, the cheerleader, a nod of heads if you know what the cheerleader is, right? Nod of heads. You guys are mostly coaches and you're in the business. So you have no problem coaching and cheerleading everybody else, right? Everybody else. You got, you know exactly what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. But sometimes if your critic is really loud, it might be challenging to cheerlead yourself. 
So the intention for today's exercise, which we're going to be stepping into in just a moment, just giving you some foundational base to understand what we're doing. And in all honesty, sometimes I like to just take you through the exercise and not tell you anything, right? Because the mind starts to react. It starts to already protect itself as I'm talking. I will run you through a meditative tool just to get you nice and balanced and clear before we jump into the full exercise. Let me tell you about one last part that we hopefully will also be talking to is the inner child. I know you guys have heard this in different books or audibles or podcasts you may have listened to. That child though, regardless if it's under the age of seven in your psyche or not, it's the part of you that believes what the critic is saying. I repeat, it's the wounded or sensitive part of you that believes what the critic is saying. And that's really where the damage happens because a part of you teams up with that critic, gives the critic weight and power and allows themselves to steal whatever peace and contentment you might have had that day. We're gonna learn what the critic wants we're going to learn where we might feel it in our body. And then we're going to also learn how to turn the volume down or shift the tone of the critic so the cheerleader can have an opportunity to get louder, more confident, and more in charge, and even partner with the part of us that might feel a little bit wounded from whatever you've experienced throughout your life. Before we get started, does anybody have any questions? This would be a good place to pause. Ladies, anything? No, we're good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's nothing. Thank you. Perfect. I do want to warn you because I, I don't know if you guys knew kind of what you were stepping into today. So if you're willing to do this exercise, please join me on this journey. It's probably going to take about maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15. You guys up for it? 10, 15 minutes, little exercise, guided meditation, basically. Yes. Okay, beautiful. And then at the end, I want you to do your very best to stay in, it's almost a hypnotic state, almost a meditative state. So you're not super conscious, but you're also not out and sleepy. You're right in that in-between and I'll take you through some breathing to get you there. Do your very best to remember what ends up happening throughout this experience. So when we're done, you can write it down. What you end up writing down, I might even have you write down something in the beginning so you have it in print and then it'll be easier to come back in your memory bank and follow through with what you've learned throughout the past next 10 to 15 minutes. Everybody sit up nice and tall. <clears throat> Get yourself to where your feet are planted, your hands are comfortable in your lap or, uh, yep, hands are comfortable in your lap because we'll be doing something with them in a moment. If you are comfortable and feel safe, to close your eyes, that's wonderful. And I'll even give you permission if you would like, if you feel too sensitive to be viewed while you're closing your eyes and going into this meditative state, feel free to turn your camera off if you would like. I want you to do whatever makes you feel the safest. Okay, no problem. And I just saw that somebody might have to step away at two o'clock, I get it. If for whatever reason you do step away, go ahead and send me a message. And when you come back, I'll do my best to catch you up on the exercise. I'll do my best to include you and bring you back in, okay? Just let me know when you leave. I'll probably see you and then let me know when you come back and I'll, I'll catch you up, I'll catch you up. <clears throat> so it looks like everybody's cool with leaving their camera on. Just let me check others, sounds great, perfect. And let's go ahead and close your eyes. Start by taking a nice deep breath. Inhale as much as you possibly can to the point of resistance, all the way to the point of almost discomfort, and then slow exhale out of your mouth. We're gonna do that two more times. You guys were about at a half of a breath. This time, inhale deep, 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 as much air as you can possibly take in. Our body is starving for oxygen most of the time. And then nice, slow exhale out of your mouth. That's it, beautiful. One more breath. This time with this next breath, go ahead and breathe as I'm talking. We're even gonna do two more, I just heard. Two more breaths, just keep breathing. I want you to say in your mind, not out loud, your full birth name. First, middle, last, that's on your birth certificate. Say it in your mind while you're breathing into your body, while you're exhaling out your day, your morning, your evening, and whatever's coming next. Be 
present with your breath, with your thoughts, with your body. Now I want you to invite the inner critic forward. We very seldom ever do this in our society because we spend most of our time running from that person or that being in our head as often as possible. Today, invite it in. And I want you to hear the sentence that the inner critic says to you. You know the sentence. It's the one that it says most often or the one that it says with the most enthusiasm and volume. Just one sentence, we'll work with one today. As your mind repeats that sentence and to give you some examples in case anybody's having trouble going there, this is the sentence that is packed with judgment about yourself. I'm not good enough, smart enough, pretty enough, can't get it done on time, nobody likes me, can't get it done right, whatever it might be, allow it to come up. Then I want you to take one of your hands, doesn't matter which hand, and put it on the body part where you feel the sentence. Place your hand on the body part where you feel the sentence. So the voice is talking. Thank you so much. Yes, everybody's doing it. Beautiful. Notice where your hand is. Keep it there for a minute. Acknowledge the critic. Tell it, thank you for sharing. This is going to build trust. He or she is going to be more willing to chat with you if you need it with respect. So thank you for sharing. Also notice where your hand is. Is this an area that sometimes you experience pain, anxiety, fear, tension, congestion? If it is, this is not a coincidence. Take a breath. Ask the critic. What does it want for you? What role does it play in your life? And if it's uncomfortable for you to keep your hand where it is, you're more than welcome to put it back in your lap, whatever feels good to you. But stay with the critic. Even if you move your hand, stay with the critic. I repeat the question. Ask the critic, what does it want for you? Does it want you to be successful? Does it want you to find love? Does it want you to grow? Does it want you to stand still? What does it want for you? Does it want you to be peaceful and joyful? Tell it, thank you for sharing. No matter what it says to you, tell it, thank you for sharing. Just notice it. Ask the critic, how old does it think you are? First age that comes up, no hesitation. Just notice you are being the witness right now to some of the characters inside your psyche. You're giving it safe space to share. Ask it if it has a name it would like to be referred to as. Some parts will give you a name quickly. Some will evade. You don't have to push it, but most critics have a name. <laughs> they typically have a name. And it's okay to be with the name, whatever it is. It's also okay to not have one, but give it something. Hey, I'm gonna call you the critic. Is that okay? Ask permission. If you hear a name, repeat the name back to it. No worries. You can always watch the recording. Take a deep breath, be in your body. I see some of you wavering just a little. Be with the critic. I know sometimes it can be a little painful. You got the name. If you don't have a name and you choose to give it a name, check and make sure it is okay with it first before we move forward. And remember how a minute ago you asked, what does it want for you? What is, how does it want your life to go? Now ask it the question, how does it react when it doesn't get what it wants? How does it react? Does it shut down, explode, go into judgment, retreat, isolate, medicate? What does it do? Take a breath. Stay in your body. Beautiful. I want you to say something loving to the critic. Repeat after me. You can do this all in your head, not out loud. I want you to look at the critic and call it by name if it has one. And I want you to say, 
Thank you for all your years of service. I repeat, thank you for all your years of service. I see that what you want from me is to protect me against pain, perceived failure, grief, loss. Take a deep breath. Tell the critic that not always are you able to receive the way it approaches you. Think of this as somebody you work with every day and you have to get along with them to move through your job. You guys do this for a living. You go in and for a living, you work with the inner critic of everybody in the room. Beautiful. Ask the critic, what is the best way that you can support it moving forward? What does it want from you? What does it want from you? Tell it, thank you for sharing, no matter what it says. Common answers might be, it wants you to listen more. It wants to have a team meeting every day. It wants you to include it in decision-making. It wants to be heard, seen, respected, and acknowledged and appreciated, whatever it needs, just honor it. And then ask the critic very nicely to please step to the side of you for a moment. Right now it's in you, on you, or in front of you. Ask it to please step to the side. Take a deep breath. Use your full birth name to call yourself back in. You were just with the critic. Make sure you're in your highest self right now before we call the next part up. This next part we're gonna call is the part of you, we can call it wounded child or inner child, but in all honesty, it's the part of you that believes what the critic said to you. Remember that sentence that you got in the very beginning, the one that it berates you with on a constant basis. There's a part in you that believes that sentence. Call that part up. Invite it kindly. It's normally very young. Take a deep breath again. Breathing is essential. Put your hand on your body part where you feel the child. Put your hand on your body part where you feel the child or the wounded part of you. Because it can always be teen, teen years and 20s as well. <clears throat> Notice how you feel in that body part. Is this a body part that talks to you sometimes? Is it your belly, your hips, your joints? Where is it inside of you? Please give it some love right now. It needs it desperately. Just send it love, let it know that you see it, hear it, feel it. Tell it thank you for sharing. And ask yourself, ask that part of yourself, how old does it think you are? How old does it think you are? Just notice, just being a witness. Tell it, thank you for sharing. Ask it what name it would like to be called. Naming parts is really nice because it opens up a line of communication that will carry you throughout your lifetime. It could be a young name that you were called when you were a child. It could be a name that that part loves, an alter ego of sorts. Just make sure you say thank you for sharing. Now ask that part of you, what does it want for you? What specifically does it want for you? Take a breath. This is a sensitive part of you, so we wanna take a minute here. Sometimes it might want something like joy, playtime, inclusion, acknowledgement, fun peace, adventure. What does it want for you? Tell it, thank you for sharing. And how does it react when it doesn't get what it wants? What happens? Just notice. Beautiful. Ask it the same question. What is the best way moving forward for you to support this part of you. What does it want? Not just what does it want for you in your life, 
What style of communication does it want to have with you, maybe on a daily basis, at least for the next little while? This is just the beginning. This is opening the doors of conscious communication with the voices in your head that control you from the inside out. Hence the reference. Okay. Now allow the child to sit beside you as well. Real close though, because you know how wounded parts are. They want to feel held. They want to feel supported. So let it be close, but not on you or in front of you. And now we're gonna call up our third part. And this is the inner cheerleader. Now for some of you, you might have challenge accessing it initially. So what I would simply suggest if that happens to you is think about the last time you cheerleaded somebody else. It can be a family member, friend, coworker, employee, client, or all the above. It's the same voice. The voice that cheers them is the same voice that cheers you. The volume is just turned up for them and turned down for you. So bring it in and put your hand where you feel that part. Put your hand on your body where you feel that part of yourself. <clears throat> Remember to say thank you for sharing and notice where your hand is. Is this a part that speaks to you often? Is it actually trying to get your attention, but maybe you're having trouble hearing over the volume of the critic? Give it thanks. It's been with you a very, very long time. Ask it, how old does it think you are? It can be eye-opening, these questions. Remember to say thank you for sharing. We're almost done. You're doing great. Hang in there. Ask it what name it would like to be called. If it doesn't give you a name, simply ask if you can call it cheerleader and see if it says yes, you'll know right away. These answers come in typically very quickly. Trust the first answer that comes. What does the cheerleader want for you? What specifically does it want for you? If it could have life exactly the way it wants it, what would it be? Make sure you say thank you for sharing. And then ask, how does it react when it doesn't get what it wants? This is important because if you notice a reaction, this could be the reaction that lets you know the cheerleader's volume is down. When you notice this reaction in your psyche or in your body, or your emotional state, it's not feeling heard by you. And then ask the cheerleader if it would be willing to partner with the child or the wounded part of you. Have that cheerleader come over and actually take the hand of the child. Beautiful. Begin to notice the similarities that might exist between these three parts that might actually want the same thing for you. Not always, but sometimes. All three might want to be loved and accepted by you. All three might want to feel respected and included. All three might want connection at the highest level, but it's, they're not getting it. Ask the critic if it would be willing to come up and hold all of your hands. The original you, your highest self, the part of you that you called in your full birth name, you can do it again if you want. Bring yourself present. Use your breath, sit up straight, bring it into your body. Yes, that's it. See all of these parts holding hands with you in a circle of kindness, respect for the differences of how they choose to see things, appreciation for the things that they see similarly, and a willingness to connect with all three of these parts moving forward for however long you choose that you can commit to them. If you make a promise to them and you say every day for the next seven days, I'm going to have a conversation with all three of you and include all three of you in the decision-making process, you've got to keep that promise. 
So make something that you feel is doable. 30 days is great. 64 is optimal. 21 is cool. Seven day is a great place to start. But tomorrow when you wake up, you've woken these voices up in a way where you claimed your empowerment and said, I see you and I see how you're running the show and I see how you're grabbing the wheel of consciousness. I see you and I wanna give you the support that you deserve and desire. And that comes from commitment to the conscious communication. Take a deep breath, put your hands on your heart, say thank you to all of the voices that chose to transparently and vulnerably share today. They are courageous, each and every one of them. It's very scary to speak up. And if one of the voices wasn't willing to speak up, be kind to that voice as well. It does happen sometimes. It needs more encouragement, more trust building. Slowly coming back, allowing yourself to stretch. <clears throat> and I would love to open up the floor before moving on to any other tools. This one's big. Go ahead and I'm going to give you three minutes, four minutes. Please write everything down while it's fresh. I'll walk you through it. Are you guys ready? We're going to write and talk. I will walk you through it and fill in the blanks the best you can because this information is going to be invaluable to you moving forward for the rest of your life. These voices have been with you since the beginning. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. And the information that you were hopefully able to receive today is an integral part of the evolution. Are you ready? So first one, inner critic, write it down. Underneath it, you're gonna put where you felt it in your body. So write down body part, dash, and put where you felt it. Next is you're gonna put age. What was the age that they told you? Even if the age doesn't make sense, there's gonna be answers that you get that your logical mind might not be able to move around. And that's okay, this isn't really logical. <laughs> These are the things that cause our emotional upheaval. Not really logical. It, like if you think about it, here's where the lack of logic is. The inner critic wants the best for you, but it's the meanest to you. It wants you to feel loved and successful and connected, but it constantly disconnects you and makes you feel like you're failing. You see what I mean? So we're, we're opening it up. All right, where are we at? So we've got age, body part, critic, now name. Did it give you a name? If it didn't give you a name, it's okay. Some parts are more open than others. Just write down critic. What role does it play in your life? You can simply just put the word role and dash and fill it in. What does it want for you? What exactly does it want for you? Put that in the role sentence. How does it react if it doesn't get what it wants? How does it react if it doesn't get what it wants? Some of the answers you might've gotten could be isolated, explode, medicate, sleep, eat. How, what does it need to feel best supported by you? <laughs> Beautiful. And now let's move on to the next one. That should have been it for the critic. Let's do the child. So first, where did you feel it in your body? Write that down, inner child or wounded part. You can write either. So you'll know for reference. Where do you feel it in your body? How old does the part think you are? Write that down. You'll follow the same lines. So if you see what you wrote for the critic, start following that same line. I'll repeat it just in case you didn't hear it. So where are we? Age, name, what role does it play? How does it react if it doesn't get what it wants? So if it wants joy for you, but you've been experiencing depression or you've been experiencing anger, lack of peace, that part of you is feeling wounded, feeling left out. It's not accomplishing what it really thinks that you deserve. Write that down. How can you best support it moving forward? Just write the word support, future support or present support, dash, fill it in.
Last but not least, the inner cheerleader. Woo -woo! Power of praise, power of praise. You gotta get excited, okay? We kinda came to get a little meditation. Now it's time to get excited, get the energy moving through your body again. You just did incredible therapy in less than 10 minutes. In less than 10 minutes, it was a complete deep dive. We're not done yet, you're almost there. So inner cheerleader, where do you feel her in the body or him in the body? How old does that part think you are? Does it have a name? What does it want for you? What role? Sometimes I just write the word role dash, fill it in. How does it react if it can't perform that role? Really important to know this is the behavior pattern that tends to live in our subconscious that we're not always aware of. I think about the Wizard of Oz is the example I normally give for this. You remember, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. I am the great Wizard of Oz, right? That's what these voices are doing. They're literally controlling the show and you don't even know they're there. And you think it's this big, oh, on the stage. And really this little man behind the scenes controlling everything or a little being, okay? Uh, I think we did all that, right? So roll, react. How can you best support the cheerleader moving forward? What does it need from you to feel more part of your team, more cohesive and in harmony? Excellent. And then I, what I would love to do, if you guys want to unmute yourself, because it'll be way more fun to hear the audio than to do the chat. But if you want to do the chat because it's got anonymity, please feel free to do that and I will read it. Here's what I would love to know. Here's my first question to the audience. Did you notice any shifts, mental, emotional, or physical shifts when you actually, at the end, when you brought it all together and hopefully the three of them were willing to hold hands, not always are they, but hopefully they were, did you notice anything? Did you notice that the inner critic got softer? Did you notice it became more open, more willing to communicate with you? I would love to hear personal experiences. I wanna go ahead and open up the floor. You can feel free to unmute yourself or send a private chat, whatever feels best to you. Hello. I hear you. Yes, yes, this is Mohammed. Uh, actually, it's not about the inner credit and uh, inner critic getting uh, weaker, but it's just uh, the child that don't feel alone anymore when the uh, when the uh, when the cheerleader intended to be by his side. I love that. That's exactly what we're going for. And so here's what's cool. Let me piggyback. Thank you so much for being vulnerable and sharing that. That was beautiful, by the way. And absolutely the goal that we were shooting for. And so part of it, go ahead and please mute yourself. Part of it is having a communication with these parts. Helen, go ahead and move me to the big screen if you can and mute everybody. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, thank you. Where was I? Ah, uh, yes, okay. You just opened up the door. You just opened up the door. And what I mean by that is, please be conscious moving forward. You created a lot of vulnerability and openness and willingness with these three parts or the two, the cheerleader and the child. Make a promise and keep it. If it's seven days, if it's 30 days, whatever it is, commit. When you get in the shower in the morning, talk to them. If you're commuting to work, talk to them. If you're making that transition from work to home, even if it's digital, maybe you didn't leave the house, maybe you didn't even get in your car, but everyone goes through a transition in their day. Many transitions, hundreds of transitions. It's part of the reason humans get so stressed. We don't handle transitions well, but yet it's the only thing constant. We're constantly transitioning all day long and these voices are getting triggered at every pass, at every movement. So if you've had a stressful day at work and you don't want to take it home, talk to these three parts. Find out what they need to go into your home life and your evening life with a state of calm and peace and connection as opposed to exhaustion and overwhelm and disconnect. 
Anybody else want to share? I'd love to hear. I'd love to actually, this is my other question, because that was a great answer to that one. Here's a question. Did anybody have an experience where when one of the voices came up and they noticed it in their physical body, it was a place where you have discomfort in your physical body? Did anyone notice that? When the inner critic started talking, I saw some of you put your hand on your head. The one thing I'll ask is, did you, do you experience headaches? Do you experience sinus, headaches, pressure in your head, neck pain? Does that happen for you? And if so, I just want you to consider that even though postural alignment does make a difference in some different pains, being dehydrated can make a difference for headaches. And, and it's a yes and. Check on this. If your head all of a sudden starts hurting and you realize that's where your inner critic lies, and the head's just an example, each and every one of you seem to put your hand somewhere else. And I want you to notice that too. So wherever it was for you, the next time you feel that part of your body talking, put both hands there. Put both hands there, take a breath. If you've got to remove yourself from a situation, go to the bathroom and do it or whatever, get some privacy, but put your hands there and say something kind in your mind. Take a breath and simply say, I hear you and watch the pain go down. Watch it go down. Just from stopping running, if we stop running from the voice and we actually lean in more, it gets quieter. The reason it gets so loud is because we run. So the more we resist and the more we run, the louder it gets and the more we want to run. That's the vicious circle. So like stop, lean in, focus. Anybody want to share on that? If they're willing to be vulnerable and if you don't want to do it on audio, you can do it here. Okay, so I have a great question. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Ellen. Ellen. I see you. Oh, sorry. There was somebody else as well, I think. Um, I was going to say something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah um, uh, so I felt uh, when you talk to them separately, I mean, they all want the best for you. and But sometimes maybe when one wants something, it conflicts against the other. But at the end, they're like, ah, yeah, OK, no, we're all together. We all want the best. So yeah. Cohesion, yeah. cohesion. Write this quote down, guys. Write this quote. And um, Ains, if you could put it in the chat box, I'll say it slowly. Harmony, harmony is when our thoughts, words, and actions are in alignment. Let me repeat. Harmony is when our thoughts, words, and actions are in alignment. You guys work with teams. Most of you either are currently working with teams or have at some point. And you know clearly that disharmony is when there's a misalignment between something that somebody is thinking in alignment with what they're saying and doing. If they're already in disharmony in themselves, it's gonna create disharmony in the group. So part of bringing this tool that you just learned into your teams, because I know that's why a lot of you are here today. So I wanted to give you, uh, a format that not only can work with you individually, um, let me give you this too, just because it's coming up in my mind. R write this down for me, please. Jay Early, Self Therapy. That's the name of the book. So the author is Jay Early. The book is called Self Therapy. The system that we just used, because I want to give credit where credit is due. And Jay created this system and it's freaking brilliant. I've been working with parts integration for over 20 years. And I will tell you, this one I've been working with for about 10 years and it's bar none. It's one of the best systems I've come across. It's so brilliant. And the way that Jay created the system was for you to be able to use what I just shared with you on yourself, right? But you can use it on yourself and you can also use the same tools with somebody else. I'm going to give you a quicker tool that takes only two minutes to teach and it takes less than 10 seconds to implement. I want to share that tool with you on how to deal with the inner critic or those voices in your head when you're with teams, because you got to have like when you're with teams, will you be able to walk them through this exercise? Maybe, maybe not. It all depends on how intimate you are with the teams. It all depends on how willing they are to go in a deep dive. Are they willing to be guided? Are they willing to go deep inside themselves and get real about what's coming up? Some teams are, some aren't. Yeah, but I will give you something else that's a little bit easier 
to blend into corporate America and government agencies and with teams in general. Does that sound good? And then do you guys have any questions about it specifically? Like when it came up for you, was there any resistance that came up? Was there any hesitation with the voices? Please feel free to share that. Anyone? No? Okay. I'd like, sorry, uh, I'd yeah, like to ask one question. What, what's the importance of the age? So when you were asking what age do they think you are? So my mine varied from critic who was called Derek, thought I was 37. Cheerleader. Oh, wait, wait, what did he say? What age did he get? 37. Okay, thank you. Um, cheerleader. Uh, sorry, yeah, cheerleader, sorry. Uh, sorry, child. Uh, thought I was 12. And cheerleader thought I was 35. And how young are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I am 35, actually. You're 35. Okay. Yeah. So first off, let's laugh a little bit. I'm all, and it's not about like laughing at the parts because none of the parts like to be laughed at. <laughs> no part likes to be laughed at. No part, not even the jokester, you know, no part likes to be laughed at. They see it as a sign of disrespect. But I will say this, I have to kind of giggle a little bit because your inner critic made sure it was the oldest. Right. So there is something to be said about that. And it doesn't surprise me that the child came in at 12, even though most of our belief system are formed before the age of seven. And a lot of ages that will come up when you're talking about wounded child will be under the age of seven. There are times when it comes in from seven all the way to 20 something. I don't want to call you out because we're on a live call and it's a very personal thing, but I will just say to the masses. Normally, if it's an age over seven, there was some type of trauma or transition or something happened. Something happened during that year or time that made that part choose to become louder then. It doesn't necessarily mean it was the first situation. It just might have been the loudest one. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll give an example, a client I worked with many years ago. Of course, no names will be used. Well, I'll just simply say they had quite a bit of trauma, but more lower T. So we say capital T for trauma or little T for trauma, right? Capital T is all the things that are obvious. Abuse of any kind, ne heavy neglect of any kind, right? Extreme or even physical challenges that are really traumatic for them to move through life, whatever that might be, that's big capital T for trauma. But every single human, even if you had a beautiful childhood, has little T for trauma. Let me give you an example of a little T. Susie or Sam, we'll use Sam for gender neutral. <laughs> Sam does an artwork for their dad. They're all excited about it. They're five years old. They spent all day on this artwork and they couldn't wait to give it to their parent who had been at work all day. The parent gets home, they're exhausted. They're a great parent. They love their child. They would breathe and die for them. They would do anything for this child. They're not an abusive parent. But they come home one day, the child hands them an artwork that they have put all of their value system in. They have decided that this is their heart and soul of the gift that they're giving. And the parent says, it's late and you should be in bed. And they take the piece of art and they put it on the table. And maybe they say, it's nice. But the first thing they led with is, why are you awake? It's time for you to be in bed. The child goes to bed, maybe even cries, maybe reacts, but more importantly than any emotional reaction that comes out, that child goes and creates a belief. And it's that belief that ends up changing our whole entire world. And it's those beliefs that control that Wizard of Oz that I talked about, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. If that Sam says, I'm not valuable, my creations are not worthy of somebody's time, my words are not valuable enough to be heard. My time is not valuable. Imagine how that belief transmits throughout their whole entire life. And each time something confirms that the belief is true, it gets louder. So by the time you're 20, you might have this situation at five years old where you go, my artwork is not creative. 
And then at 10, maybe something happens in art class. At 15, you have to do this thing for school and it, it's art and you're paralyzed, right? A, a, a paral paralysis by analysis. And you're overthinking because this belief is making you overthink. And the belief's not even true. Your parent didn't want you to believe that about yourself. They certainly didn't. And they didn't mean to do what they did. They weren't malicious. They weren't malicious. But this happens to all of us. None of us are free of this. I haven't met anybody yet. There are some people who do an exceptional job at communicating with the voices in their head, but they still have to do the job because if they don't, it's that man behind the curtain or woman behind the curtain. I also want to bring up one more thing because Helen mentioned this and I didn't mention this in the beginning, but for those of you who are watching the recording or still taking notes for yourself from the therapy you just went in for yourself, the process, is did you notice that she said her inner critic was male? Did you notice that? And so I want you guys to know you're going to have multiple genders in there, multiple. You're going to have feminine voices. You're going to have masculine voices. And you might even have androgynous voices or what we can call non-binary, right? So either way, you're going to have a mix. And, you, and the other importance of the age, Helen, is not only does it wake you up to the maturity level of a part sometimes you know those younger parts don't have a lot of life experience and they're trapped in the memory bank of where they were created does that make sense it also gives you information to be able to communicate with the part that's age appropriate let me give you an example angry teenagers <laughs> from 12 to 16 or 18 or 20 something are way different than a part that's four to six years old, way different than a part that's two to four and way different than a part that's moving into corporate America in their twenties. So what the, when they say the age, what the part is really waking you up to is giving you insight on how to communicate with it based on its psyche. Does that make sense? To everybody okay great so it, you don't have to get caught up in the age i've even had some clients come and parts will come up and say they're ageless i've had parts go i'm ageless or i'm older than you or i'm older than the earth or you know like sometimes the answers they give are hysterical i had one say 150 okay so you're 150 cool man you're you're ancient and that's really what the age is saying it's saying that it wants you to understand this. And those young parts that come in, they're really the ones that are saying, I need you to hold me. I need you to rock me. I need you to baby me. Or remember I'm a toddler and just learning to walk. Or remember I just started school and I'm nervous that I don't know everything. Where, wherever the age is, use it to help you implement. And to make you laugh, this is funny. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That went by really fast. I'll have time to teach the last tool. My grandmother worked for the government for 40 something years and she worked herself all the way from the bottom, literally the bottom to the very top and worked with some of the most brilliant minds in our country and even outside of our country. And she was a linguist, knew multiple languages. The point, she used to say that even though she was high up in the government, it felt more like she was running a daycare center. Here she was working with people with masters and PhDs and doctorates and the like. <laughs> she literally said they acted like four to five and six years old when they would come into her office. Have you guys ever felt like that when you're working with your teams? Have you ever felt like you were managing a daycare center? It's because you are. These are the voices that are controlling the scene. So when you ask yourself, how can I implement this strategy into my teams and into my corporate life? That's how. You can, and I'm going to show you a tool real quick on how to quickly work with the inner critic. This one is so simple to teach. Each and every one of you should be able to do it. Um, Helen, can I just jump right into it? Did I answer the other stuff fully? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Go for okay, it. great. Okay, I love this tool so much. So <clears throat> close your eyes again. I'm not even going to explain the tool. We're just going to do it. Okay, so just close your eyes again real quick. The reason I ask you to close your eyes is because it helps your brain focus on the sentence. It helps your brain focus on the activity instead of looking at me or looking at your screen. So you don't have to close your eyes in life once you get the hang of this. This is just and allow a 
sentence that the inner critic says to you to come back up again. You can either use the same sentence that you used before, but in all honesty, you might have decreased the end already. So you might want to use a new sentence. It's up to you, but pick one. Pick one, repeat it in your head. You can do this with your teams. You can even have them put their hand on the body part where they feel the sentence, because that's helpful, especially if they have physical pain in their body. And I want you to just notice the tone and the cadence of the critic. Just notice it. Is it fast? Is it slow? Is it deep? Is it high? Is it sharp? Is it soft? Is it a whisper? Is it angry? Just notice. Beautiful. Notice how intense it is, the intensity of it. Are you feeling it pull on you? Then do your very best to come up with a funny voice. This can be any voice you want. It can be a comedian, an animated voice, a voice that you make up, a friend, a family member that you find funny. Take that voice and repeat the sentence. Repeat the sentence and watch what happens. If you don't laugh and you're not smiling and you didn't cut the energy in half, you don't have the right funny voice yet. It took me two weeks to find my funny voice and only because I kept matching my cadence. So let me give you an example of my funny voice in case you might have had challenge. Here it goes. Mine is Eeyore. Now, most people do not think of Eeyore as funny. It's Winnie the Pooh. I hope you guys know Eeyore. Here's a ghost. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I can barely do this with a straight face without laughing. I've got it so programmed in my mind that it works almost immediately. I will do my best. Oh my, oh bother, I can't do anything right, and nobody likes me anyways, boom, 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 right, okay, I, I can barely say, like, my whole entire body is lighting up like a Christmas tree, and I'm already laughing on the inside, and I've got my voice trained, I've been doing it for probably five, 10 years. I've got it trained. It might be, it might take a minute at first. The reason it took me so long to find my voice, I kept going with the chipmunks and Tweety Bird and all these high pitches, but my inner critic is high pitch and very annoying. And so it wasn't working. And as soon as I went low and slow, it cut the energy with a quickness. You will know you have the right voice because it will work in less than 10 seconds. In less than 10 seconds, you should be able to take the intensity of the barrage that's coming from the critic and cut it in half enough to get your people in the room and your teams resourceful. If their inner critic is up, they're not resourceful. All they can hear is all the fear that the inner critic is putting on them. They can't hear what you're saying. They're not absorbing. They're out in la la land with their critic chasing down demons and dragons, right? So you gotta bring them back and no better way than humor. And that's really what that tool is. Helen, I hand the ball back in case there's questions or we want to talk about some different things we were mentioning. Lovely. Thanks. Thanks, Helen. Heather. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very interesting session. I must admit, I, uh, I wasn't expecting expecting that sort of activity um so it was a little bit nerve-wracking i would put in the beginning of the key oh my like goodness this is nerve-wracking nerve shaking i make up words so i don't know if that's real <laughs> no nerve-wracking is was that the inner critic work that was nerve-wracking or the funny voice uh, no just i guess the whole experience of going through the motions for a, a long period of time i thought I, I personally found it um just different i think different with an audience and things like that so it was really it, but it was good it was interesting to go through that that sequence of you know naming feeling aging how it you know the emotional side of it and and, and stuff so yeah very very interesting um I want to say one thing on that and I appreciate you saying all that because you speak for the masses and if people are watching this recording there is going to be someone who felt exactly like you 100 guaranteed. so I want to just speak to the pain point of it if you're using this for yourself or you're using it for teams, you don't have to do all three voices. I really sat with this when I thought about coming on the show and I thought, do I want to do all three? Is it going to take up too much time? What does that look like? But because I'm talking to people who are going out into the world and planting forests, 
I wanted to give you an opportunity to have all the components. But what's super cool is you can break it down and divide it. If you feel like a team has lost motivation and confidence, just in, do the inner cheerleader, skip the critic and do the inner cheerleader. And the way that you can do it is you can just simply say, imagine somebody that you cheerlead every day, see the voices and hear what you say to them. Feel where you feel that cheerleader in your body, have them put their hands because it really does make a difference. When you put your hand on your body, you come in quick and you can do that exercise in less than two minutes. You can send them through the cheerleader. You, they can see where they feel it in their body. They can hear what they cheerlead other people with and then internalize it for themselves. And rightfully, you might be able to take the whole entire room and raise the vibration just by incorporating the cheerleader. Inner critic work is intense. And I was a little nervous about bringing it in today. But I have a feeling from what I'm getting that you guys did phenomenal. You did absolutely great. And we did it in less than probably 15 minutes. And now you know you can subdivide it. And so if you're working with a team over months or weeks, don't do it like I just did it. My God, nobody has time for that, <laughs> right? Especially when you're working on projects, but you could do one and then let them sit with it for a week and then do another one let them sit with it for a week. And then by the end of the month, maybe you've talked to all the voices and you've taught them how to collaborate with the beings inside their head. Does that make sense? Yeah, and it was my next question actually of how we can sort of adapt this, uh, ad adapt this for our, te our teams um, as well as individuals sort of one-on-one -on -one if, you know, and we have any coaches out there, but, but also within ourselves. So you could, you could do it as a team um a team exercise just like we have done today which is good absolutely <laughs> and and remember there i don't want to say there's no right but you have the questions you can see them where you wrote down right you don't have to do all of them i even debated about that i debated about just saying where do you feel it what does it want from you Okay, move on. Where do you feel it? What does it want from you? Move on. The only reason I gave you all of it is because, well, most 80%, 80%, 80%, but instead of 20, is so you would have options moving forward of how you want to facilitate. You can play with this tool and getting the self-therapy book by Jay Early is gonna help clear up some things that I obviously don't have time to go deep into. I, I just don't, but not only will it be useful for you, you can do one-on-ones and bring in the funny voice. I see where, uh, where your partner mentioned, you know, my critic maybe could be Michael McIntyre, but I can't do the voice well. So what I will suggest for people, if you have a voice that you love, but you can't do it well, see if you can't modify it enough and it still work. If it doesn't work, let it go and find another voice. Don't overthink this. If you overthink it, you've already, you've already shot over the moon, right? Just this is a simple exercise. Two minutes to teach, maybe one, 10 seconds to implement. Two minutes to teach, 10 seconds to implement. So we want to keep it really simple. And it could just simply be, if they don't have a funny voice, have them do what I did. Have them just change the cadence and the tone, the pitch and the cadence of the tone. If it's fast, make it slow. If it's high, make it low and vice versa. And that might be able to get you to the next level with somebody quicker without them having to think about a funny voice. Some people feel pressured by that. I normally have at least one or two people who are challenged by the funny voice initially, but I've also had those same people come back and go, oh my gosh, it took me a couple of days, but now I've got it. And I use it every day and it's amazing. And the more you use these tools, the stronger they get, the easier they are to use, the easier it is to facilitate yourself and others. Yeah, that's, that's great. Are there, there any other questions within the team and the group? I mean, just to comment, it was great to be reminded how how powerful it is um, to ask how would you cheer somebody else and then apply it to yourself, or you know when you sometimes speak with individuals that they just they are in this situation they can't seem to see anything beyond that, and you ask them you know which kind of uh, advice they will give to somebody that is in a similar situation that they really love. And just that change of plans, it just helps so much. It, it, yeah, it's been a fantastic reminder on that. 
Yeah, and I, I want to actually give you the language for it too. In the system that we use, it's called a swish pattern, right? And what it basically is, is let me give you an example, one that I use. I'm going to be vulnerable with you, but this one's funny and hopefully will make you all laugh, but I'm going to put myself out there and be totally authentic. I am not a girl that can walk in heels very well. I'm not a girl who can walk in heels very well. I should probably stop saying that to myself because it makes me walk in heels even worse, but I'm literally like a baby giraffe. When I walk in heels, it's quite the sight, is not sexy by any means, but go with me on this. So anytime I have to get dressed up, I'm not wearing heels today, by the way. Anytime I have to get dressed up and wear heels, I do a swish pattern. You can laugh at me if you want. <laughs> I'm laugh myself with Angelina Jolie. Now. The reason I use her is because to me, she's a masculine feminine, meaning she is really strong in her masculine and really strong in her feminine. And she's able to kind of go back and forth, right? I literally imagine that I'm her. I sit on my bed. I think about how she would walk or I think about a supermodel and how they would walk the runway. I embody it completely into my body. I get up and dang, if I don't walk different. Now it might not hold the whole night and I might need to do a swish pattern about halfway through, but it really does work. And I'd say that one to be funny because it's hysterical. It's all good. We all have our things that we're great at and we all have our things that we're not. And so if somebody is lacking in confidence or their insecurity is really high, they can find somebody in their life, an inspirational, motivational person that they can use as an example for that specific insecurity. The reason I shared the story about the shoes is because I wanted you to see it's not always heavy. It's not always heavy. It doesn't, we're not always having to solve world peace. It can just simply be that we want to look good walking down the street. <laughs> I'm being funny. I'm being funny, but you know what I mean. It could even simply be that we want to eat healthier or drink more water or stand up taller or breathe deeper. Think about the people in your life that are already embodying those things. There is something to be said about using an example to help us visually see, emotionally feel, and mentally get clear about. And then stepping into that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like that you call out the, it doesn't always have to be something massive, because sometimes when you have these sorts of days and these conversations that you're like, oh God, I need to think of something that's like, you know, mind blowing. And it could be, I mean, walking in high heels could, is mind blowing for me as well, I must admit. But it's, yeah, it's just little things that you can kind of transform. Start, I mean, start small, work your way up, um, maybe to, to bigger things as well. So, yes, yeah, wonderful. Helen, I'll, I want to piggyback on that real quick because this is such a big topic and I don't want to end on anything heavy, but becoming out of COVID and everybody really figuring out how to do re-entry, I want to just say this one thing that you triggered in your talk is forgiveness. If I'm guiding somebody through or facilitating, and this happens in corporate America too, right? Because people hold on to things that are standing in the way of the project when really we just need to implement forgiveness and acceptance. When you're doing a swish pattern or an embodiment for forgiveness, a lot of times, or an anchoring tool, a lot of times people will want to go big. If you ask them to think of a time when they forgave somebody or, or forgive, forgave, or someone forgave them, people's minds think they have to go to the biggest thing in their life. But it's actually easier to go to something really small that is easier to forgive. So I'll give an example. Let's say, um, Somebody spilt wine on your carpet. Okay, like that's not a big deal, but you had to forgive, right? And it wasn't massive. It's not like a parent leaving or, a, or somebody dying or somebody being abusive. Those are massive. That's massive forgiveness. But somebody spills something on you or does something that was whatever, and you go, oh, of course I forgave them. It was effortless. Well, that's the memory that you want your people to use. You want them to use the one that's effortless to embody, not the one that's most massive that might have a bunch of other emotions attached. So if you're working with someone that goes has abandonment issues, let's say, because that's a really big issue or abuse issues, and they're attempting to come up with forgiveness, there's going to be tons of other emotions attached. Fear, anger, sadness, so many things. It's not going to be pure forgiveness. So we want it to be the purest state of forgiveness. It doesn't actually have to be big. I hope it was okay to piggyback on that because I just think well, where we are in the world right now, that piece of information can be golden for somebody. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
So if there are no other questions then. I'm just popping in the chat as usual, please, if you guys can just click that link uh, and tell us uh, what you thought about the session, some of the things and which topics you want us to cover. We're taking a break for summer. Please look after yourself, take a rest, recharge, enjoy, and we'll see you back in September. But please, please fill that up. It takes two minutes. Uh, and yeah, it helps us in our roadmap for what we're going to do together in the future. Ladies, you were amazing. Thank you so much for trusting me with your tribe and for bringing me on today. It was really fun. It was really fun. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen, for being present. And I hope you enjoy sharing some of this information with your people. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great. Thank Bye. you, guys. And adios. Indeed. And will there be a recording where people can listen?